Welcome to the NCHC podcast. My name is Paul Gilmore, and joining me today are two brothers that uh, one of them was the Maravich Award winner at our 2023 National Championship, and the other one is his younger brother that uh, finished in second by one vote. So that would be <laughs> Andrew and Caleb Thomas, and they're joining me on the podcast today. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Doing good. Well, thank you so much for giving your time up to during the summer to come onto the podcast and uh This is something that's kind of a new venture for us within homeschool sports. And so we're just trying to, you know, highlight the the players and teams and fans and things that really make it a special thing to be a part of. So uh, excited to have you guys on and uh, looking forward to kind of highlighting and showcasing um, you guys as examples for homeschool sports and and just good things that are happening within within basketball. So uh, first question I wanted to open it up to you guys is obviously the. The past nationals, you guys are coming off a undisputed three-peat national championship. Mm-hmm. So three in yeah. a row. Uh, some some of the broadcast team and I had joked that if it wasn't for COVID, it might be four. You never <laughs> yeah. know. But for sure, for sure, three. And yeah. so during that run, uh, obviously there were some challenges. There were some things that came up. Uh, I remember in the semifinal game against the Indy mm-hmm. Wildcats, it was a mm-hmm. very very tight game at the end. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, yeah. you know, pulled it off on the three-peat. So at what point? You know, whether it was that last undisputed game or during that run, did you guys really feel like, man, this this is really going to happen? I don't know. I mean, I would say our our coach prepares us so well before each game. Mm-hmm. So going into each game, it felt like I knew the other team so well. Um, so going into it, it wasn't like I was just playing a game that I had no idea what was going on. I felt like I was going to win going into every game because of how well we knew the opponent and everything. Um, so thanks to our coach for that. Then again, other players play really well, like in that um, semifinal game. The other team, they, the Indy Wildcats played amazing, and they hit a lot of tough shots. So there are things you can't prepare for, um, but I think just how well we prepare for every game going into Nationals, I kind of felt like we have the upper hand uh, going into every game. So whether it was during the national run or even, you know, regionals or before that, at any point did you and your team end up watching film on any of the other teams? Uh, Yeah. All the time. (laughs) We watched watched film of every team we played before every game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we didn't play a team last year that we didn't watch film for. Yeah. Our coach breaks it breaks it down and sends it to all of us and gives us pointers and yeah gives each player different things to focus on he says so really well and that kind of goes into what you guys were talking about with the preparedness you know Mm -hmm. feeling like you really know that opponent and being able to break down sets or whatever it is that they're trying to highlight yeah i could see that being advantageous and yeah uh, i appreciate it as well if you were watching any of the broadcasts because that you know, ups our numbers for that. I'm just kidding. Oh. But <laughs> so you guys pull off the three peat, and mm-hmm. a lot of people obviously have a lot of focus on the performance that you guys had, uh, mm-hmm. particularly as as the two brothers during that mm-hmm. run, but particularly uh, that undisputed, which which I'll talk about here in just a second. But when you're looking at that feat, which you know as of right now is a three peat, how, how incredible was that to pull that off with the team that you had this year, like and the teammates that you had. Yeah, uh, that was amazing for me. Like, it, it was kind of like, uh, so the championship we won last year, we had uh, three really great players. Um, Justin, Drew, and Luke were their names. And I was beyond grateful to play with them and have them as my teammates. That was a really fun year. Um, but kind of when they all graduated, uh, we had a lot of people kind of question us about if we were the same team if we were even championship ready as a team um so being able to win with the guys we had this year uh, meant a lot because it felt like we were questioned a lot kind of um and those are, i mean those are just my brothers and they they give it all give it they're all every single game and so it was really fun to just win with those guys and um they all played super well and we needed every single one of them for the win um so yeah it was a really special win for, for us. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, there was only, I believe, only three seniors that you guys had on this previous team? Or was two, there more? Two of them. Two, two, two seniors. Them. So yeah. for the most part, almost everybody's coming back yeah, and so, up for yeah. another run. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's one thing that I always uh, thought about with MHEA 
is you, mm-hmm. and even I guess within homeschool basketball, but uh, more recently with MHEA, you have those families that you know guess shoemaker mm-hmm. uh, more. You know, yeah. there's just it just doesn't seem mm-hmm. like there's an end to how many yeah. there are, which in, <laughs> yeah. in one sense I think is really kind of fun. You know, because yeah, it is, it is. Uh, year after year you just feel like um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, there's that camaraderie of older brothers. Yeah. I remember back when we played, and uh, yeah. I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of that, which I think is really yeah. cool. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It is cool. Uh, so speaking of that, going into next year, obviously I can imagine the goal is to extend that dynasty, mm-hmm. go for the four mm-hmm. P, which you know Rob Flat and I, the tournament director, we had talked about after nationals as that's a very special class of teams that you're getting mm-hmm. into once you get to that yeah. level. I think when we broke it down, there was only two teams that had ever done four P or better. Uh, oh, wow. So that's that's some pretty special territory if if you yeah. guys are able to accomplish that. But going into next season, how do you have that same level of hunger? Like you've won three in a row now, and I'm, yeah. you know, obviously you want to win another one, but throughout a full season and then into the postseason, how do you keep that same level of hunger and not just get apathetic about it? I feel like every year, I mean, even after our first championship and then together we won a JV championship, we've always, we've never lost it. I mean, I know <laughs> I know it gets, I know three is more, but we've always wanted, our whole team has always wanted it. And then every year there's new people there are one or two new guys that move up from the JV uh, that want the hungry just as much as us. Everybody wants to win, and I don't think we ever lose that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome, and uh, it is a long season, and mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of things that can happen, but. Um, there's certainly a, a lot of excitement going into next year and yeah, uh, a lot of cali- high caliber of players across the board that were, mm-hmm. were, are coming back. There weren't a lot of seniors that had graduated and yeah. moved on. So should be some really good competition going into next year. Oh, yeah. And so going into this season, what are besides winning the fourth, what are some of the goals that you guys have set for yourself, either individually or as a squad? Uh, what kind of things are you guys looking to accomplish? Um, I would say... We have a growing reputation in Memphis. So last year we had a couple humps that we weren't able to get over, get over uh, just in the city of Memphis playing these high schools here. Um, so I'd say our, one of our biggest goals right now, aside from winning the NCHBC National Championship, would just be uh, winning more, having a better home record here in Memphis, uh, just making that more solid uh, because... The competition here is really good, and um, if we're able to like get over that hump, I think that would be a really uh, good goal for us. Well, that kind of leads into my my next question. There, within the homeschool world, and mm-hmm. and I'm semi familiar with this. I used to play for HCA out of the Houston area mm-hmm. when they mm-hmm. won, you know, five, six, seven in a row. I don't remember how many yeah. it was. We, we won a bunch within that span of time, and yeah. it, it got to that point where it felt like within the homeschool world you were seen as the giants to be conquered, Mm -hmm. but in the public school world, you were still like those homeschool kids. And so (laughs) within the Memphis area, I guess what, what is kind of that reputation you had mentioned trying to increase that reputation, but within Mm -hmm. Memphis, how how is MHEA viewed and and where do you guys kind of see yourselves within that basketball world? So we're definitely over the years have been, have a growing reputation. Uh, It used to be, a good couple years ago that we were always scheduled for public schools and private schools so like homecoming games and like just these big games that they thought oh we'll, we'll beat up on the homeschool kids um and then these recent years we've been scheduled for a lot less of those games because uh they know that we're actually like a solid team here in memphis and they so it's definitely growing um we're getting a lot better uh reputation here in memphis for sure Getting scheduled for more of those preseason games. Yeah. Not, not yeah, as many exactly. of the homecoming exactly. regular season games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what is it like to be, to share this experience? You guys had mentioned, you know, at the JV level and I'm sure down into the younger mm-hmm. levels as well. Lots of winning. Mm-hmm. What has it been like to experience that those kind of things as brothers? It's been awesome. And then, as you, I don't know if you know, but since I've been eight years old, my dad has also coached me. So I've played with, I've always had my dad and then I've had him every other year with me playing all the way up and every year it's just so fun to play. And we always go to practices together, go to each game together. It's just so fun experiencing everything together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, Andrew, this is your senior year coming up, right? 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So one, yeah. one more ride, right? As, yeah, as brothers. Yeah, one last ride. <laughs> at least in high school. Um, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, your your dad was telling me that you guys also are a big, kind of a bigger family. You've got four sisters. Mm-hmm. And and I imagine yeah. that they're, uh, you know, pretty competitive as well. Oh, what's definitely. It, what's it like having yeah. a, a big family like that that all love to compete and play together? It's awesome. Uh, growing up, like all of us, all of us kids growing up, we were never told we had to play basketball. That's just kind of the sport that we all chose. And uh, so that was awesome because we all just, we all love it so much. And my older sisters, they originally joined MHA first, played it all the way through their senior year. Uh, now me and my brother are going through. And then two of my younger sisters are on the younger girls teams. They're going to make their way through too. So it's a lot of fun. Um, just we've all gotten better over the years. We've all had so much fun over the years doing it. Uh, so it's really cool. It's, uh, it's fun too, cause we're all pretty competitive. And before me and Andrew ever won, our older sisters were actually a part of a three P as well. When the MHA girls side had a three P. So it's fun now that we both got it. So it's kind of just become the expectation around the house now that you get, you yeah. get repeats, yeah. right? Yeah. Now the younger sisters have to get yeah, the repeat. They, they yeah, they have to it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's funny. One of one of my favorite memories from Nationals this past year, and I, I know it's not just this last year. You guys do it every year. But the mm-hmm. MHEA fans, uh, in particular oh, yeah. the varsity boys, would show up mm-hmm. at all these other games of, of all the different age groups. And in particular, I think it was on um, – or around St. Patrick's Day, you guys showed up mm-hmm. in the Care Bear onesies. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And just an incredible like atmosphere <laughs> that you guys bring. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think it's really fun. Yeah, uh, it's so and much fun. Speaking of that family competitiveness, uh, I know you guys probably obviously have all kinds of practices and you have some off-season stuff you're probably doing, but do you ever still just get to play one-on-one against each other? And, and if so, who's winning the majority of those these days? You know it's got to be me. <laughs> it's not it's not it's not it's i will i will say it's about 50 50 it's probably 50 50 we go back and forth a lot it's not we'd no neither of us really goes on a streak we'll we'll go back and forth a lot beating each other yeah is it uh some of that like post like trying to post him yeah. up and then he'll try to take you to the perimeter is that kind of how yeah, that goes exactly okay. yeah. <laughs> which it's funny because that works perfectly for your team schematic it but does, on the yeah, it does. It does. So, yeah. <laughs> that's fun yeah uh so this question is specifically for for caleb so i'll mm-hmm. ask you what, what question first um that undisputed game that that you played was one of the most unbelievable games that i have called in all the years that i've been doing these broadcasts and I remember on the on the call we were trying to keep track of that three point percentage on that particular <laughs> game, which yeah. I don't know if this is a game plan or not, or if 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 it just kind of worked out that way that you were just uh, unbelievably hot. But what was it like experiencing that game and that level of success on that stage? It was so fun. I mean, that was that's uh, obviously one of my best shooting games in my entire life, <laughs> but it helps. It helps so much that the rest of our team was playing amazing. I mean, our senior, Johnny, had two threes, and then another player had one, and the other senior, Carson, had another three. So it helped that everybody else was opening it up for me. But it was it was fun being able to be the one to hit all the shots. But everybody else got it for me. Yeah, and, and for Andrew, you're, we had mentioned earlier that your senior kind of coming up on, on that last run going for the four-peat. Mm-hmm. Do you have, as much as you're able to speak about, do you have any plans for kind of what's on the horizon? Are there, you know, is there some people looking at you? What, what's that looking like going into your senior year? Yeah, so I've had a couple coaches um, of the next level talk to me and reach out to me. Um, just, I haven't made anything official yet. I'm not, I'm more so really excited going into this next, uh, this last senior season. So that's kind of what my eyes have been focused on. Um, so I haven't really made any plans or thought too much about after uh, high school's over, but yeah. Is it a little bit more challenging to keep that same level of focus um, on coming up on your senior year while also trying to balance what's next? Or is it more I'm solely focused and then let me try to figure it out? I think it's more I'm solely solely focused on this last season. I, I think so. I've just always, uh, it's kind of been a, uh, repetition almost like as soon as nationals ends i'm i'm already ready for the next season to start 
Uh, so that's just kind of where my mind has been. I'm already just looking forward to just this next season. Uh, I think I'm really going to enjoy it, and I hope we uh, are able to perform and uh, pull it out. Okay. Well, last question for you guys. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe your dad is also a pastor or part yes, of a church. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, you know, within homeschool basketball, one thing, one of the things that I really love is, and that's not to say that other programs, other mm-hmm. um, organizations, private schools, public schools can't also have a dedication to their faith. But mm-hmm. I love that homeschool basketball really celebrates and champions mm-hmm. faith as kind of the center of all of it. Yeah. And so for you guys uh, and the examples that you're trying to be in the Memphis area and beyond, how does your faith play into all of it? How does it play into the basketball? How does it play into your church and the kind of things you're doing outside of basketball? Um, mm-hmm. I'd love to just hear from you guys how your faith plays into all of this. Um, for me, it would be just the Lord has blessed us with a lot of success. And so knowing that we wouldn't be able to do any of that on our own, uh, just giving all the glory to God is just one of the biggest things we try to do. Um, because we know without him, none of this is possible. Um, and it's really cool. So our, our dad is the head pastor at our church. So, um, everybody knows that we play basketball. So that's really cool just to kind of, uh, I think it's an easy way to kind of reach the younger generation because they obviously like to play sports and stuff. And so I'm able to kind of connect with them with that, but also um, talk to them about faith and everything. So it's really cool to, to do that. Yeah. Like you said, just giving glory to God while we're doing it. Because obviously basketball, I love basketball as much as anything else. I mean, it's just my favorite thing to do. But not letting it take over and not letting it, you know, be more than my faith and giving all glory to God and everything I do. Yeah, that's a great perspective to have. Obviously, you can have a a full love of the gifts and the the passions that God gave you, but not to make it into an idol either. Mm -hmm. So uh, you guys got some good heads on your shoulders. (laughs) Thank you. I'm looking forward to this upcoming season and uh, what you guys are looking to accomplish. And Mm -hmm. um, any, any final closing thoughts that you guys have? Just thank you for inviting us on the podcast. This is great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. Well, you guys have a great season and we'll uh, make sure we'll keep track and follow uh, the Memphis basketball scene as we head into this upcoming season. Yes, sir. Andrew and Caleb, thank you guys and y'all have a good good day. Thank you as well. Thank you.